Hey y'all. Um, while while that other video that's that's a a bit more, I guess, serious maybe. Is the right word? Maybe might be the wrong word. Um. Hmm. Yeah, the other one's going up like now ish. Uh, this one. Yeah, I wanted to talk about my D and D thing. Heck, I didn't mean to open that. This is my music making thing. Uh, shit. Let me get, let me get, let me get the recaps open. Yeah. <laughs> um. Ooh. I'm gonna try my best to keep y'all in the loop. Got it. Didn't even leave the chair. You gotta stay hydrated and shit. So session one, session one came in. I w fun fact. It's th that was my uh, first first campaign. I was like actual campaign instead of a one shot. I was DMing. Um, I suppose I can let you in on the fun facts too. Well, suppose it's the wrong word. I should let you in on the fun facts, as they are pretty fun. So we got. Let me write them down. So I. Yeah. We got. Elroy. Oh who's playing cowboy ish person. Cowboy type person. But his class is a ranger. We got Dante. And. Uh, they're playing a um, monk, but like kind of bad shit. We have um, people who will come into play later. A Kieran who shows up every now and again. He's a druid. Who doesn't care? Um, we have Carton. He is a paladin. Who is um, <laughs> goofy? <clears throat> if my voice can stop like cracking, that'd be amazing. But you know. Um, then we have Lorwell who just showed up for one, but yeah, we'll get him. Um, so our, our three, I, I would really call these people protagonists as, uh, yeah, we got three protagonists, Alroy, um, Dante, and Carton. Carton will show up later, but for now, our two main protagonists are Alroy and Dante. Um, so session one, we opened up with uh, Dante walking. The fuck? Nope. Mm -mm. Not. No. Nope. Oh, I've seen. Nope. Mm -mm. Ain't looking at that shit. No, not me. Not my movie. Making some weird thrumming noise too, like. Mm, nah, not me. No. Um, session one, we had, I didn't write down session one, which was a huge mistake on my part, um, so it's lost a time, 
apologies. Um, session one, we had we had Dante pull up to Elroy's house. Elroy has his own homestead. It's pretty. It's pretty nice. It smells like lavender and elderberries. Um, and he's just like, uh, Dante's like, nah, nah, I don't want to go there. So he goes to town, avoids stepping on a crunchy leaf, <laughs> smiles an evil DM, <laughs> um, and goes to the. There's, I didn't, I didn't plan out the town. There was uh, so I just said. Uh, four shops. There's an inn, um, a general store, uh, fuck you, we're better store, and a tavern. Because every town has to have a tavern. Um, so, yeah, uh, Dante went to the fuck you, we're better store, and they only sold cabbages. Um, and we cut over to El- to Alvare, who was, um, in his house, and he found out one of his cows was acting weird. He stood up on two feet, said, hey, uh, something something, plot hook something something, I have very important information, you should follow me, basically. And, um, and Alvare's like, what the fuck? You're not a cow. And he's like, oh no. Unzips his uh his cow suit, his cow fur suit, and just like Ah runs away. <laughs> um Elroy follows him and when presented with the chance to step on the crunchy leaf, he does step on the crunchy leaf, and it turns out to be a piranha plant from Mario. <laughs> it does one D six damage. <laughs> <laughs> it you don't you don't even make a deck save. It just does damage. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of it. It's homebrew. <laughs> yeah, homebrew. And um so Cow suit guy, his name is Dommy, he comes into play later. I should probably write him down. It's D O M M Y. He always says dummy, not dummy. But by always say that, I mean he says it like twice and it never caught on. Um, God. Personally, I liked how this campaign ended, not to suck my own dick, but yeah. Um, they. They. Chase dummy into an alleyway. Where Dami gets stabbed in the throat, then stabbed in the cheek. And with a three, um, Elroy barely, barely sees who stabbed him and just runs away. Well, not run, Elroy doesn't run, the person runs away. Um, okay. Uh, so, Elroy goes into the fuck you were better store because, I don't know, he was, he wanted a beer or something, and suddenly the, the guy, the clerk, that's, that's, that's what it's called, a clerk, um, his name was, uh, was Frankenstein's monster, or the daemon, um, yeah, very original, I know, he, he was, uh, not doing very well mentally, and he picked up a sledgehammer, just like, pew, 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 just like starts wrecking the place, and we ended with a roll initiative, and session two, he was defeated just like that, I'm like, behind my DM screen, I'm just, well, I should say, sitting, hmm, Mayhaps. Yes. Alright. This was... I was in California for session two. On a trip. And, um... Yeah. So, a bit of background. Magic magic and the use of magic is illegal. Like, it's like... It's like going around 
doing hardcore drugs in the middle of a crowded place. You you will get the call the cops called on you and you'll get arrested. But like if you can use magic it, it uh, essentially uh, essentially you're a black teenager in America and everyone else is just cops who want to just like take you out. I suppose that's not a good analogy. Kind of insensitive, and to that I apologize. Um, it's really hard because you can't show it, is what I'm getting at. I know a lot about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> just drop some lore <laughs> casually. <laughs> Um, so, session two, um, they defeated Frankenstein and they stopped by Elroy's homestead, um, because Elroy got shot in his hand, just like, with a gun, because guns exist. Don't worry, I balanced them out, or tried to, I tried. Um, and blue, sh blue shoe guy who's named Dommy. He, he wears these neon blue shoes that just, like, for real, adorn his dogs. Just, he, it's his pride and joy. Um, he really wants, he dresses up as a cow and really wants to go back to the city to meet up with someone named Zakai. Um, the... Suddenly, um, plot hook. Also, this was originally supposed to be a murder mystery, but it's devolved. Because as D&D campaigns do, they devolve. Um, Dami, Dami lures everyone to, back to the city. Um, well, kind of just be like, he, he was like, hey, let's go to the city, please police and the tv said oh cool there's like this thing going on in the city we should go hint hint wink wink and uh yeah um zakai never became like really a thing after this she kind of just faded off um uh so Dami got to the city, and he did his signature uh, type thing. Don't worry, he does that a lot whenever he shows up. Um, he did he did that, and apparently that was the signal for a bunch of magic users to just come out, just start using magic, try and normalize it in the society. I said the word society. Oh, Joker. <laughs> Um, and so they sent, so we got cops and the cops, they're the bad guys in this, well, a, a minor antagonist really, a recurring minor antagonist, but if, for instance like this, they sent out hunters. Hunters, they do exactly, they're like bounty hunters, but, you know, they don't bring them in alive at all, or bring them in at all. They just, da -da 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 all of them, all gone. That's, that's their one job. Um, yeah, so there was this, there was a hunter named Ravana, he, he is a fake cowboy. That's his whole thing. He um he's a uh, war forged, but he wasn't really forged in war. He was just like made because people wanted to make a make a a cowboy robot, and he's like uh, sick. That's cool. And he speaks with a very very um very city accent. Um, he, and he's, and Elroy's like, fake cowboy, and he's like, 
I don't know what you mean. I am a real cowboy. Tips's um hat that still has the tag from from uh Cavender's and then just like slaps his boots that have um that are fresh from Boot City. <laughs> and <laughs> um it was Dante and Elroy who who were there. I did not write a lot on this recap. Um I'm filling in a lot of this for memory. Session three is when I wrote a lot. Um they ended up rap battling him, which was pretty funny because they were actually we were actually like rapping at each other. Um, I was on the phone, just like headphones in, uh, talking, and and by the reactions in the car, they were everyone was having fun. It was a good time. It's a good time. Um, on on like both ends because they were. Um, Dante's player was like coming up with this as they were going and Elroy was like El- Elroy's character was like laying down this sick beat <laughs> and I couldn't think of anything because I kept rolling low and I genuinely couldn't think of anything and it ended with um, it ended with uh, with Ravana just running away instead. Session three. We call this one. This is when I started naming them. Session three. Emotional damage. Um, the mob got out of control. The hunter bailed. Um, and there was this. Y'all know Titan shifters from Attack on Titan. They shift their shape, be, and well, they shape shift sort of, and um, become titans. Like Aaron in the attack, Reiner in the colossal, you know. Um, so I decided to do that with a few dra- a select few dragonborns. They would have the innate ability at birth to turn into full dragons, like, um, and this this uh, dragonborn who was a captain in the cop in the cops corps. Um, he was um, an earth dragon shifter. He can pull the earth from beneath him and just like fire it out in a pressurized beam. He can craft and shake the earth around him. And he he would have been pretty hard to defeat, um, but we'll get to that. <sighs> um. He was running on the scene. He was. He gave everyone one warning only. Only one. He didn't say. And and it was a quick warning. Like y'all better stop. And then he just like changed. S- flew flew up and then just. Half the crowd was gone. But before this happened, a short little goblin managed to grab managed to grab our heroes, except for Karen. Who um, who just shapeshifted into a bird and flew off. Um, the goblin, uh, helped hide the peop- hide the party in a store, and stop people from entering it. This kind of goes against his character later on, but you know, I didn't really have much of a plan for him. Akiran met a pigeon, who invited him into his home and tried to kill him, with a. A shotgun. I guess you could say he used bird shot. Uh, <laughs> I am alone in my room at three o nine in the morning doing this. <sighs> yeah. 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 Um. That brought me back down to earth. <laughs> uh. All right. The dragon shifter, that's what I called them. His name was Carl. And so, after wiping out almost all of the magic users, there were a few who managed to get away. Um, Carl found found that that store was boarded up. And, uh... What did he do? Um... 
he like went to the door and was like, I know you're in there, let me in. And we cut over to Akiran. I think Akiran killed the bird. I forgot to make a stat block for the bird because I really didn't anticipate Akiran fleeing uh, from the party, splitting the party. <laughs> but yeah. Um, he killed the bird probably, more than likely. And uh, he turned back into a person like when he was just right above his head. I like to think that he was like right here and just like bang, dead. Um, but uh, no, he's alive. Um, oh, it was a uh, plot, <laughs> plot Mac Guffin. He goes by Mac, um, and his last name's Guffin. Do you see what I did there? His name's Plot. <laughs> but he goes by Mac Guffin. <laughs> I'm laughing at my own joke. <laughs> um, hmm. So, it was a... Uh, so, Plot stopped them, and the Goblin Child... The goblin person's name is Lloyd, and he's a child. He is four foot six in canon, and he has uh, neon pinks, uh, thigh high stilettos, and he is rocking them. And he is twelve years old. Um, La Lloyd also has a bear named Quentin. Uh, Akiran crushes Max's feet, and um, everyone's like, "Dude, what the fuck?" in character and out of character um and so they take him over to uh, over to Elver's homestead where a magical TV blips into existence and um it said hey y'all y'all should go to this city and the Lloyd um hmm. Akiran blips out of existence and uh we we don't like we don't like Jason's player Jason, oh shit, I should add Lloyd and Plot. Um, we don't like Jason's player, but he kind of did play a pretty big part on this one. Jason was, um, he's an asshole. Like, genuinely an asshole. I'll probably say what he did some other time, but... He is a fucking asshole, and we do not like him anymore. Um, but yeah, Jason's play. Jason blipped into existence at this point because people blip in and out of existence because we all have different times and dedications and shit. Excuse me. We all have different times and dedications and shit, and uh, <sighs> so. Jason meets his old friend Laverna. Don't worry, there's like nine different Lavernas in this campaign. Um, and Jason's whole thing is, Ooh, I'm edgy. I'm broody. Oh. And it's like, dude, play someone else. Please, this is the ninth character you've made that is like this. And who is not extremely horny please for the love of god play someone else and then his then then jason's player's like ah uh, no i don't think i will because he's an annoying little cretin anyway laloid begs to go to fuggaduck and it, the city was called fuggaduck but now it's called I I renamed it after Cave Town Songs because this is this was called the Meteor Shower Campaign. Fuggaduck became Devil Town. Um Yeah. Um Laverna is Jason's old friend and she says Look, I know you're done, but I have one last job for you. And Jason reluctantly takes it because, of course, because clearly that's the only thing that player knows how to do, and that's cl 
clearly the only thing we could work out. Not a solid, like, character story or anything. <sighs> this guy is actual, like, in real life infuriating to be around. So... It brings me actual anger. Um, yeah, so Jason, um, so Laloid aggra aggravates, uh, what the fuck did I write? Aggravates uh, Jason, who hurts Laloid by, um, like, <laughs> right into a wall, breaking his spine. And, um,. Wait no, he kicks him. He kicks a Lloyd in the balls, and Elroy kind of just like kicks him into a wall and breaks his spine. Um, Lloyd is just like horrified at at the two of them. Jason spits on him and walks away, and Elroy's like, "Oh shit, no, 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 no! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, we got on the wrong foot. Here, let me help you up." And that's how we got um, probably one of the sweetest uh, dynamics in the whole campaign. And so Lloyd is uh, Lloyd got fixed up um, and uh, all right, we got fixed up and Elra and Lloyd get a little closer. like as a father and son. So ah spoil us down. Um, Laloid reveals that he wants to be his, wants to meet his mom again, and Jason's assignment is that he has to kill his sister. If you have two brain cells, you can draw these lines, um, but, you know, they're staying in character, which I was, I, I was surprised that Jason wouldn't try metagaming, personally. Um, and while they were walking, they were going to the same place. And after a heartwarming reunion with mother and son, Laloid's mother, mother Veronica, uh, finds out that Laloid uses magic and says, Damn, I know my civic duty. Nothing personal, and calls the cops. Just as she does that, Jason drops from the ceiling, stabbing her multiple times, um, killing her brutally. Blood is everywhere. The the walls are red and shit. Um, uh, Lloyd tries to tries to get Jason off of Veronica, his mother, but Jason slams him into a wall, breaking his spine again. Lloyd is out of commission this time, and as the cops, I I made the cops horrifying in this encounter. They float up to the... They're in a tower, right? Like, it's a castle. The room is circular. Um, there's one tall window there. A door that leads to a staircase winding down there. And there's, supposed, there's supposedly one way in, one way out. <sighs> Take this room, for example. Um, say there's no closet over there. It's just wall. And that window is larger than it is. Um, the the duo, well, the trio would be standing right about where I am. Uh, Lloyd's mom would be right about here-ish. Um, the cop, the cop came in and he's like, uh, "All magic must be eradicated," and just like purple energy just emanates from his hand, just like shoots out from one fireballs from the other and he just like starts spinning around the room uh, not only vaporize almost vaporizing everything he has everything in in like line with his uh, purple fi magic firing hand but like setting it on fire with his right just circling the room Jason rolled a nat 20 and found a secret passageway because he's been there before and on the way on the way down there was um a guard that they passed who let them in he's hold, he's guarding the way um his name was martin and he almost killed jason with a poison tipped blade 
he slashed he just like slashed up and Jason got cut it did 3d tens worth of damage and um yeah Jason was very lucky um it does 3d tens worth of damage then you do I believe it's 1d6 every 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 turn to try and cure it um Laloid went back for Jason uh and managed to set Martin the guard on fire giving um and um because Laloid is going to be the bigger person obviously and Alroy with 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 Jason at one HP cures cures him. Um they manage to get out of the castle where they encounter this person, basic bitch, who carries around nine foot claymore. Um I remember I I memorized his uh his speech that he does whenever he introduces himself. He has a nine foot claymore, he slams it on the ground it's 3.21 in the morning. I'm not going to actually slam my fist on the desk. I am bitch. I am bitch. Fear me. I am bitch. Ah. <laughs> and, um... And... With another nat 20, uh, Jason hid, hid successfully in some bushes and beelined towards a nearby woods. While... With a 14, he didn't pass the the check, unfortunately. Elroy holding the Lloyd up just narrowly avoided um, Bitch's sight. And the Lloyd, who's crying that he killed a man, um, Bitch saw and heard this and threw his claymore like, like a, a freaking sphere. And it just... Barely missed Laloid and um just barely missed Laloid and Elroy by mere inches, flying through the brick wall and then coming back to his hands like Milnir. Um Bitch screams and Lloyd cries and just like as quietly as he can in Elroy's arms. Um Elroy Elroy manages to get get to the forest with a series of successful rolls where Dante kind of just followed the trail because he he came in late and he's like um Dante blipped in late um so he's just like following the trail of carnage and then he's like oh hey y'all <laughs> and they have a little bonfire and they do surgery on the Lloyd making him able to walk again and uh yeah um they the Lloyd hugs them both and he offers to hug Jason, and Jason refuses. But, um, yeah. Session 4, Jesus Christ, someone hug Elroy. Igni, who shows up later, I should put that also down. Um, Igni and Carton also join the party here. Um, they're in the woods, still wanted. It's morning. Um, Igni and Carton just like kind of wandered there, and um, there was a negotiator named Billiam, and uh, he's he found them. He is not a dragon. He's not a dragon shifter, but he is a druid, whose wild form is a dragon. He always has his wings out, so he could just like. Just, just for quick and easy access, you know? And, um... So he's like, Hey, y'all, I'm the negotiator. So, you know, please don't try anything funny. And, um... Jason attacked him. He's a problem player. Uh... Um... And so he's... And so he attacked him just, like, by trying to jump on him. But he's like, all right, nope, and just flew all the way up to try and, like, drop him down. Um, he also reversed gravity 
so everyone's floating now. Um, they all tried to do to fight him, and they all did quite a bit of damage. But Billiam, the negotiator, got tired of fighting and just flew away. Carton, who's an Asimar, who also has wings, said, Oh, no, the fuck you don't, and flew after him. <laughs> and, um, and Billiam, like, dived down, and a cop was like, Magic. Magic. And just, like, flew at him. And Carton's like, Dap me up. Because that's, like, his whole thing. Uh, we cut back to the, to the, um, to the, like, people who were, Tara, the original party. <sighs> In the meantime, and um, yeah, uh, they got to the ground safely. And Carton, who's a paladin, and his his uh his goddess is Aqua, the god the goddess his um his word. I want to say sponsor, but it's not sponsor. I'll just say sponsor for time's sake. His sponsor is Aqua, um, the fire deity, fire goddess, and she's and she came from the heavens to help Carton, who got tackled by the cops, and who was downed by the cops. Uh, the cop was at like seventeen health because Carton just um, surprised him with a smite, and I'm like. Oh, I did not prepare for this. <laughs> and so I buffed the cop the cops up at the cop. I buffed the cops up after this. Um but yeah. So I gave I gave uh Jason a magical axe because um I went to go see Sonic 2 with a Karen's player and the timing was off and I said if anyone anyone who just like puts on some music for me to drive to you get a magic weapon and the axe puts you in a time loop basically um <laughs> and so Jason cut him with the axe just a little bit and he was put in a loop and I I saw where this was going because Carton tried to put um, more and more things in a loop, and so I capped it at three things, three things in a loop. Um, so he would just like keep getting chopped. Uh, his hat would get chopped in half, and a little, a little, conf- a little card fall out, and uh, yeah, that was the whole thing. Um, alright, so they went, they wandered to a nearby town, and, and looked for supplies, and, uh, here's the trend of, um, NPCs being mean for no reason. Uh, the NPC was, a clerk, and he was, he was like, hey, yeah, so how much gold you got on you? And everyone's like, ah, just, not much, not much. And Lloyd saw this Lego Death Star. Elroy had enough for supplies and the Lego Death Star. So he said, just this. And the clerk asked for asked for all their gold. Um, just to see if it was real. And he just like put it in the cash drawer and said, Alright, uh how much how much are you paying? And they're like, dude, you just took the money. And he's like, No the fuck I didn't. And he pulled out a shotgun. And <laughs> here's where I surprised the party. Because originally I was supposed, to, originally the clerk was supposed to shoot Lloyd right there, and just like, gone. But, but, um, everyone liked Lloyd, so, so Carton said, "I'll take the shot instead," and that's how Carton almost died by getting shot. And, um, this is uh. All right. Jason just went to just went to a bar and just sat there. gave gave Lloyd who likes to drink um, a bottle of Skull whiskey, which it has a fifty percent chance chance of killing you. <coughs> Homebrew. Um, 
Uh, all right. They healed up Carton, and but Lloyd got his right arm shot off. Uh, Lloyd was just out of it for the whole other thing. Jason left to spin off land, which spoiler alert, he gets caught by the cops and executed. Um, that's that's just my head cannon, but you know. Um, Carton also blipped out of existence, and there was another town. Uh, something seemed off about it. People there were too nice, or too mean. So, turns out it was being controlled by Homebrew Windigo, because, yeah, I kind of ran out of ideas, so I was doing my best. Um, and it stood about 45 feet tall and roared. Currently, it's just Igni, Laloid, and Don- not Dante. Igni, Laloid, and Elroy. Dante didn't make that session. Um, so... Igni uses, uh, fine steed, finds a horse, and they all just, like, hightail it out of there. Um, the, the Wendigo just coming up, just like, rawr, 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 and, um, yeah. <sighs> uh, fast forward a bit, since this, this was just like, alright, find a plot hook, find a plot hook I can exploit into a story. Um, they ended up playing Squid Games, uh, wait, no, 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 they go to Elroy's homestead, this part's important, um, they go to Elroy's homestead, and, uh, after, after some time at the beach, they go to Elroy's homestead, and there they find Elroy's hateful ex-wife Vivian, she is important. Like very important. That's V I V I E N N E. Um, it's complicated for no reason, as is she. Um, Vivian uh, uses telekinesis to rip off Lloyd's arm and say, "Oh, I can kill him." And Elroy also loses an arm by trying to punch by trying to punch something with a, uh, well, Vivian made this sort of magical uh, acidic virus that instantly dissolves anything that comes into contact with it. He was not supposed to punch her. This was supposed to be a deterrent, but you know, he did. And he kind of paid the price with his arm with a nat one on his roll. Uh, it was, he lost his arm. It is what it is. And so they went to play Squid Game. Uh, the the grand prize was a wish spell scroll. You just have to read from it once and then it disappears forever. Um, they ended up playing Squid Game and uh, Igni, his his friend is uh named squeegee oh 333 ooh haunty witchy hour his friend agni is is also participating and, and then it's just three of them well four of them including lloyd i assigned them a number value on the d4 well a d4 this is a d4 it's four-sided um they picked number one through four and then i gave Squeegee and, and Lloyd, the other two numbers, and yeah, they, it, it ended up going to Squeegee, and Elroy, um, like, dove towards it, grabbed it, and made a wish. His wish was for Vivian never to exist, which, um, he kind of fucked up the whole thing, because it reset everything to post-session one. And with that, that is when the game really started. And, uh, yeah. It's... <laughs> uh, it's... 
in the recaps, uh, Carton says, holy cow, the last session wasn't canon, kinda. <laughs> and then Elroy says, I mean, it was, but I guess I'm the only one who remembers. Ye motherfucking ha. Huh? Just like sad, sad emoji. Um, and yeah. Uh, session five, finding Laloid. Elroy and Akiran um, are standing in front of Frankenstein's corpse, and Elroy just had a breakdown. Lloyd wandered onto the scene, and Elroy knows him, and Lloyd's like, ooh, stranger danger. Huh. Not fun. And, um, and so he's like, ooh, step back, step back. I got a fireball. I got a fireball in my hands, and I'm not afraid to use this bitch. And so he just, like, raised it up against his, above his head and just, like, dropped it on himself. It blinded everyone but everyone was successful in their in their dexterity saves and there was a pile of ash in the center thus comes the repeating trend of me trying to kill a Lloyd but you know um c'est la vie hold on there was there we go there we go there's a thing on the screen that was bothering me uh so we go so um they ended up gaslighting this cop and canceling canceling the cop on Twitter. Twitter is canon in this in this campaign. Um well by they I mean Dante, Carton, and Elroy. And then after running this way for a while and then running that way for a while and then running back this way for a while, they ended up finding the Lloyd because they were like genuinely upset and I was like like they they were actually upset. So I'm like Alright, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do this to them. And yeah, so uh Elroy goes back to his house and turns out Dommy's just chilling on the couch and and uh he threatened Dante. Carton um <sighs> Dante has a brother, Felix. Uh, bonus points to you if you get where this is from. And Carton mercilessly beats Felix with his shield and ties him up. The cops pull up to the house. <laughs> and, um, yeah, they ended up torturing him. And, uh, <laughs> here's, here's where... Here's where the party's name came into play. Um, with a nat, so Carton told me, I want to break his balls. And I'm like, you're going to have to roll high for the a nat 20. And so thus the ball breakers were born. Uh, he punched his balls and gone. Reduced to atoms. Um, yeah. <laughs> they shattered and Elroy had to cut it off. <laughs> he woke he woke up after a long rest though. Felix began summoning the gods and Carton said, Oh no the hell you don't and punched his jaw off <laughs> like off of his body. <laughs> and um in the recaps I put them I put what what happened. They're yelling uh, Dante's yelling, did you cut, did, did you punch his jaw off? Fix it, fix it, since that's his brother. <laughs> and Elroy's just like scream, screaming. Um, Carton's like, oh my god, oh my god, I use lay on hands to heal his jaw <laughs> and stop the bleeding. And, um, well, uh, Elroy used mending to just put the jaw back. Uh, a magical TV showed up and said, Hey, the cops are on their way. Bye. Ooh, ooh. And, um, uh, Laloid and Elroy hid in Elroy's closet. Um, Dante hid inside another closet, and Carton just started stripping and pretending to be in a BDSM relationship that went kind of haywire. Um, and Carton with a nat one fails his strip, and, uh, <laughs> the cops, 
just like start moving into detain slash murder him. Um, and Laloid tries to turn Eller invisible, and so he could escape because self sacrifice. And Eller's like, Nah, nah, you're coming with me. And he and he just like shoulder charges the closet door, just like smacking one of the cops into a wall. And just like, keep in mind these cops are made out of iron. And uh, he just like punches one in the jaw, knocking it to the ground. Um, he pulls Lloyd along with him, and uh, they manage to get they manage to get um, Carton back into his armor and just get them out of there. Um, Carton says, I, I use Firebolt, and sets the house on fire, and it becomes an inferno. I know y'all are thinking about Dante, and I was too, but they forgot about him, and I didn't. Um, yeah. It turns into an inferno that melt. It melts the, um, the iron and just burns it to a crisp. Um, the cop, the, um, Felix is dead. Felix, is, well, sh- should be dead. Should be dead. Um, but you know. Reoccurring villain of the week. Um, Dante ends up coming out of the fire different. Something's off about him. Seems unhinged in a way. And yeah, more cops are coming. And so, uh, yeah. They leveled up after that, and Dante says, says, I've achieved enlightenment. And yeah, that was session five. Session th- six, oh boy, do things get worse. Uh, Dante laughed himself out of existence, and Carton grabbed Elroy and Laloid in one hand each and began flying away. Three cops were behind him, and Elroy dropped his gun. Elroy has a magical gun that um, that shoots six bullets that deal 1d12 each. Um, don't worry, that's balanced. That is very much balanced. Um, and so, uh, yeah. Carton set, um, tried to set the field below him on fire by shooting fireball at it and creating a smoke, smoke screen. But a cop came up from behind and tackled the Lloyd um, from behind, breaking his spine, um, and also dropping him. Carton stopped and stopped flying and just like dove down, cast a. But lucky for him, he was in he was within uh, like sixty feet or so. So he, Carton cast Shield of Faith on him, and they used the glowing aura to get him. The cops started just like shooting through the flames, like they're purple and fire bolts um and Elroy flash burnt um Elroy flash burns and the ball breakers defeat the cops uh Carton asked Elroy to summon Aqua and Aqua was being a bitch and made Elroy lick her feet um this and uh got rid of any liquids on him and opened a portal to a safe area Carton, after hearing some rustling, rustling through a bush, throws a fireball towards it, and um, it instantly kills a Black Panther, and this triggers um, the Black Panther's owner, Wu. Wu like charged towards them, and um, Elroy, Elroy intimidates him and makes Wu piss his pants. Um, Wu tries to sneak attack, and Carton, uh, and, and he misses, and. Uh, Carton used Divine Smite on his balls and broke them. Um, Dio, the goddess of fairness and emotion, came up and... Yeah, Carton threw up on her shoes because she looked like Dio from JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, heck, where was I? Um, Wu was also Laloid's brother. 
so yeah. Um, Wu's also dead. Uh, Aqua, Aqua winks at um, Elroy after appearing and saying, hey, fuck off to Dio. And that brings them into a very small and quaint town. Um, it really just has two buildings. This giant, like, mammoth of a skyscraper and a hotel bar. A hotel slash bar, not hotel bar. Um, they go in, they go inside the hotel bar, and, um, Elvor embarrasses himself by failing to spin to a spittoon, and so they just, the, El- Elvor just goes to a room, and Carton tries to flirt with the, the receptionist, who's named Laverna. This Laverna is the one we're following for the rest of the thing. Um, so... Inside the room, um, turns out there's this, uh, there's this stoner chick in there already. Her name is Lauren, uh, well, yeah, Lauren Expo. <laughs> yeah, that's the chair. <laughs> it's the chair, I swear. You're embarrassing me, chair. Anyway, it's a chair. Um, Lauren Expo is has this thing called Mega Weed, and uh, yeah, um, Elroy and Lloyd smoke, and Vivian showed up, and I know what you're thinking. Oh, what Vivian? I thought she would go, she was removed, but the thing is, I'll, I'll we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, she casts uh, a dead magic zone in like a 30 feet radius around her so she's the only one she who can use magic um she takes her hammer and El- Elroy can't move one uh she breaks Elroy's legs and um Elroy keeps missing his shots. Uh, Carton casts shield on himself, and uh, Vivian picks up Lloyd and rides him out, rides him out a window like a skateboard, uh, land, killing Lloyd. Um, like it, it, it snapped his neck upwards, and uh, yeah. Um. The party also jumped out the window, and <laughs> she broke Carton's legs. At, well, she crippled him temporarily, and she also crippled Elroy. And she began her evil villain speech about just like how she's just so much better. And um, she summoned Aqua, uh, grabbed her hair, and just like pssst, stabbed a knife right in the back of her throat. And Aqua is dead. Goddess of Fire is dead. Fire and he just begins his spear at that moment. Um, slowly, but surely. In about 24 hours, there would be no heat or fire or any way to make fire. Even with magic. Um, <sighs> Carton, I'm getting kind of tired. And I'm going to make this a two-parter. Uh, Carton ends up just like ripping Vivian to shreds verbally. She takes one d8 psych damage from this because, like, <laughs> the part that sticks out to me is, um, have you considered fishing? Like, you're <laughs> find a hobby. <laughs> you are so obsessed with your ex-husband. <laughs> That you followed him to <laughs> this quaint little town. And that's about all I can remember. My brain's just like a clip show, I don't know. Um, and so, uh, apparently, Vivian is this thing called a Nexus. And Lloyd is also a Nexus. And those are like. There's, there was this villain um, in the past 
named Maldad Mortal. He's also important for later. You'll hear about him a lot in part two. Um, and Maldad uh, was an extremely powerful sorcerer. Well, sorcerer is the wrong word. Magic user, I should say. And the gods could barely stop him. So what they did was, once they managed to kill him, they met, uh, it almost tore the universe apart. So they took, they picked like six or something, how many people? Uh, not a lot of people. Um, they picked those amount of people, let's just say nine for simplicity. Uh, they picked nine people and those nine people would be the, um, the sort of foundation blocks for uh, reality. So when Alvaro made his wish to wish out Vivian from existence, the universe kind of just did like a little hiccup, like, oh shit, no, mm, can't do that. Uh, and so, yeah, she didn't get removed from existence. Um, certain memories might have, but not her herself, if that makes sense. Laloid was also a nexus. And so Vivian's plan was to kill Laloid. So, so, um, I don't know, for her plan. And then kill Aqua. So the gods won't be hurrying to pick another nexus. Just like, ah, eh, you. For the few seconds it would take to. They'd be too worried about, oh, what are we going to do with, without fire and heat? And, um, yeah. Uh, Chet, the goddess of well, the god of wealth and inheritance came down, and he was a douchebag, like an absolute ass. And there's 17. Mm, yeah, we'll do session 7 then end it. Session 17. We killed God, motherfucker. Um, Igni blipped into existence again, and... He was following the path of destruction left by the ball breakers. He stumbled, he stumbled across, uh, a, upon a post-session 6 Elroy and decided to help him out. Um, the new duo talked for a little bit and went up to the room with Lauren Expo. Uh, Lauren's like, yo dude, you got your ass kicked, man. And Elroy tried to fight her. He got his ass whooped. Um, and so she gave him some information anyway. Uh, saying how they need to find this guy, Freddy. Freddy's going to help you get your soul back. Well, get your brother. Not your brother's. Uh, your your boy's soul back. Um, so they go over to the mammoth building, and there's stalls on the bottom floor, just like rows and rows of, of just like uh, merchant stalls. They're all selling all these things, and... Chet shows up and's like, ooh, I bet you want some of them. Too bad you're a broke bitch. And Igni, Igni tries to punch him. And uh, I'm like, dude, are you sure you want to do this? Are you really sure? Because Chet was level 40, I believe. And I, I made, I leveled him up to level 40 with um, a level 20 wizard and like a level 20 sorcerer or something. I don't remember. Uh, that's that's also homebrew. Um, so Elroy caught not Elroy, Chet caught Igni's fist and began turning it into gold. He has this um, this thing. His god power is uh, Midas touch. Don't worry, god powers aren't reoccurring. Um, I kind of forget about them. So they they roll initiative and they are getting their ass kicked until the highlight of the series for me Dante well Carton blips into existence and joins the fight helping them along the way and then Dante blips into existence too just Avengers assemble and everything um, the stalls are in the air floating because of gravity Laverna joins the fight just as a support her weapon of choice a broom 
<laughs> and the stalls were set were selling spinjitsu scrolls. You read them once, they disappear, and you know spinjitsu. Um, an invisibility cloak, and then a scroll with laser eye that gives you laser eyes. Alvary had the laser eye scroll. Um, Dante the invisibility cloak, and Carton the spinjitsu scroll. Um, Carton began spinning up his arm, like um, like like a fly buzzing around a horse's tail, just spinning all around it, going up towards his head. Um, Dante going up from behind, stabbing him, and then disappearing with his cloak, so he won't be seen. And Alvar just lasering him like he's Homelander. Um, Wu had this uh, had this had a series of weapons: a barbed whip, um, and six daggers, a bleeding dagger, a poison dagger, uh, a disease dagger, a hypersensitivity dagger. No, um, a bleeding dagger, which does extra damage, a poison dagger, a hypersensitivity dagger. A paralyzing dagger and a nightmare dagger. The hypersensitivity dagger made every it, it just amplified every sensation tenfold. Um, Carton was telling me in person, uh, like when we were talking about this, uh, since he really wanted to use these daggers in combat, uh, a, fa a very effective way of torturing someone would be holding their head down on the desk. That would feel like you're having thousands upon thousands of pounds pushed against your skull, mind you, just by someone holding your head just ever so lightly against something, and just like pounding on the desk that your head's on. And I was like, god damn, man, who hurt you? <laughs> and, and yeah, yeah, I just think that's kind of funny. Um, uh, Chet got... So, um... Carton ended up slashing Chet with the hypersensitivity dagger, and Dante took out his knees along with Igni. He goes to the ground, and he's begging for this to stop, and he used his wish spell to make that stop. Alroy broke his balls by shooting it, and um, the group morphed together to make this thing called the Friendship Being. That's also important for later. Um, I should probably write that down. friendship being um they ended up like so um chet was begging for forgiveness he's like uh he's like hey hey, hey, hey chill it was it was all joke all joke man all joke and they said ha joke this and use the friendship being to punch his stick off um they killed chet the goddess not the god the god of wealth and inheritance chet but um yeah something about the gods they don't really show up too often and um yeah they haven't showed up on the places uh campaign takes place in lunar in i would say going on 200 years gods also run it on belief um if you stop believing in them, they fate, their power becomes weaker and weaker. Once you kill them, if no one believes in them, they're gone. Like, forever. Um, anyway, Freddy came down the stairs, and he's like, Y'all were supposed to follow me, come on! And everyone's just like, fucking bullshit, Freddy. Uh, car... Freddy's also British, and he says, you want fish and chips? Carton says, yeah. And they they all travel to um, this, this guy, HR. HR loves having gay sex just in the middle of the room with people watching every, all, all the time. And um, he's having gay sex with Guillermo from What We Do in the Shadows. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> it, while, while he's just going at it um, while he's just going at it 
uh, he says, oh, the way to save Aqua, and I suppose you want to save your son too. You gotta take a life. Um, I suppose you've taken the god's life downstairs. Uh, yes. You can have Aqua's soul back. And so, but you need a vessel. And, um, so they got, uh, so Carton volunteered to be the vessel and now has, has Aqua directly inside of him. He can channel her powers and everything. Uh, and Vivian, while she's walking through the woods trying to do her plan, um, suddenly Lloyd's body just flies backwards. <laughs> um, and they use Lloyd's body since it's like still on this plane. And yeah. Uh, to get to get his soul back, they also had to take a life, and the party was looking around the room, and then Carton said, "Let's kill Freddy," and everyone was just like in agreement immediately, <laughs> and so um, Freddy with thirty two health didn't he didn't stand a chance against um against the divine smite with Aqua's power. <laughs> he was vaporized. He got punched in the balls and vaporized instantly. And, uh, yeah. Alroy intimidated HR, making him piss and shit his pants. And, yeah. He stabbed HR with a hypersensitivity dagger and just, like, slammed the table. And, um, yeah. HR began crying and they left. And it took another four hours. Uh, they revived Lloyd. And Carton taught him spinjitsu. Um, yeah. That's gonna be it. I'll give you part two later. Bye.